the reason we're, we're talking about this with you, even though it makes us uncomfortable to revisit what we went through, I think other people out there are going through something similar to what I went through. And I think if you watch this mm -hmm. video and you hear my story, then it might help you not make all the same mistakes that I made. Hey guys, so today we are gonna talk about Ben's health story, his health story of dealing with conventional medicine and that first year and a half of him having his symptoms and conditions, he went from conventional doctor to specialist to naturopath just to figure out what the heck was going on with him. Yeah, I was a pretty healthy person, right? Yeah, what we would have thought was healthy. We would have called it healthy back then, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, you know, I play. I went to the gym four days a week. I'd play hockey. I'd golf. I'd swim. I'd go on hikes. You know, the last time I had any health problems, and they weren't even health problems, I had wrist surgery back in like 2002, so when I was in like high school. Um, but prior to that, no real problems. So I'm going to do a lot of the talking here because it's you know, kind of my story, but I wanted Ashley here to be my my sidekick, my <laughs> side support in case she wanted to add anything to the story. So this all started back in August of 2015. We were due to get married in uh, September, and in August I went down to Mexico for my bachelor party, and I started feeling odd. I had... Um, this dizziness, this feeling like I was on a boat, I had pains in my stomach, I felt very fatigued, I felt uh, these heart palpitations happening to me, and this was the day that I was leaving Mexico. I was in the, the airport and all this stuff hit me. And they actually had to call an ambulance, the ambulance showed, showed up, I got put in it, taken to a hospital in Mexico, and they ran a bunch of tests, you know, couldn't find anything, nothing that stood out. And they just thought it was, it was from it being my bachelor party and just a lot of drinking and I was just dehydrated and that I would be okay. And so they gave me some IV fluid, sent me on my way. So we made it back to California and about a week later, me and Ashley were, were out to breakfast. And after breakfast, we started walking back to the car and I had all these weird symptoms that hit me. Horrible vertigo, horrible off balance, felt dizzy, um, tingles and numbness throughout my whole body, uh, really bad brain fog. I couldn't, couldn't really process my thoughts. My vision went blurry. I had a headache. I was nauseated. Um, my stomach wasn't processing anything, so I was having like really bad diarrhea, and then like, you know, the next day it'd be really constipated, and you know this this went on uh, throughout the whole day, and finally that night we ended up going to the ER. Yeah, that was a Sunday. We went to the ER, and that was two weeks before our wedding. And so we were like, okay, let's figure out what's wrong with you so we can, you know, get you all better. So that first trip to the ER, it was like the first time I'd really been into a hospital since 2002. So we get in there and we tell them what was going on. They gave me some hydration. Uh, the only thing, they, they were in blood tests. The only thing they could figure out was that my white blood cell count was slightly elevated and uh, sent me on my way, sent me home. And uh, this went on for the week. I kept having these same symptoms pop up. They weren't going away. The vertigo was like unbearable. I couldn't even get off the couch to walk around without feeling like I was going to fall down. And then finally that Thursday, we ended up back in the hospital mm -hmm. and when we ended up back in the hospital they took it a little more serious in the hospital and they said okay this is the second time you've, you've showed up here in a week we want to run some more tests so you know they ran a CT scan 
uh, to see if it was something going on with like my neck or spine because I, I had the, the vertigo going on. My white blood cell count was elevated again. So in the doctor's mind, oh, and they tested me for, because we were in Mexico, they tested me for uh, Giardia, which is like a, a, a stool test. And no Giardia, uh, nothing odd with my CT scan. And the only thing they could tie it to was the white blood cell count. So they prescribed me Flagyl, which is an antibiotic. And they gave me a seven day course. And those seven day course would essentially fall into our trip to San Diego the following week where we were going to get married. So I was basically on flagell that whole entire week, and all up until the day of our wedding. And the day of our wedding, I was off the flagell, and then all my symptoms came back harder than they ever did before. And keep in mind, this is the, the day we're supposed to get married. So <laughs> that morning, my parents took me into the ER in San Diego and same deal. They ran all these tests. They couldn't find anything. They found uh, something wrong with with my heart, like my my beats on my heart were irregular, which was probably from the heart palpitations. But other than that, they couldn't find anything wrong. And I remember the doctor even coming in and saying, you know, do you think that this might be caused by anxiety? Because you're, you know, you're, you're going to get married today. Do you think that you're just having an anxiety attack, a panic attack because of yourself getting married? It's like, no, that's not it. I've been dealing with stuff for, for two weeks now and no one seems to be able to figure it out. So the doctors in San Diego didn't provide much help. They really didn't run many, many tests. It was all the same blood work and everything came back normal just like it did before. And so I uh, got some IV fluid in me and went to get married. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up getting going through the wedding. We got married and then uh, decided after everything was said and done, well, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. Maybe the doctor was right. Maybe it was anxiety. Maybe I was just nervous about the wedding. And I remember even telling people this at the wedding because I felt so good at the wedding. And uh, the day of the wedding, when we were, I was getting ready to walk down the aisle. You know, I, I, I remember this and this moment will never, never leave my soul. This will never leave my life, this, this story will, will go down in history because it was uh, so eye-opening and awakening for me. Uh, my dad and my mom and me, I, was, I remember laying on the, the, the couch in the room before we were due to walk down the aisle and my dad and my mom got on their hands and knees, held my hand and said a prayer. And, you know, asked my, I remember my dad asking uh, for me to, to give, for God to give me the Holy Spirit so I could get through this. And I remember feeling semi-normal after I felt the Spirit within me and it helped me you know, walk down that aisle and, and get married that day, you know. And so uh, it was a very special moment in my life and a, a very special thing that I shared with my parents. And I'll never forget that moment. And um, I, I feel as if that was what got me through that day and got me through that uh that moment in my life. So after the wedding, I was feeling pretty good. You know, the next day, I, I think, you know, I was jumping in the ocean and stuff. It felt like I was kind of <laughs> getting in my old, old way of things again and was feeling pretty good. And so we decided that we were going to go forward with the honeymoon. 
yeah, we had planned to leave that following day, so two days after our wedding. Yeah, so the plan was is we were going to leave and we were going to do a, a trip to Europe where we were going to go to Greece and Italy and France. And we were going to be gone, what, about a month? Uh, Something like I think that. it was three weeks. Yeah. A little over three weeks. So we decided we were going to move forward with that. We went to the, the airport that day and... Uh, you were feeling a little bit funny that morning. You yeah. the vertigo. And then I remember that they had overbooked the flight, so they were offering free vouchers if you got on the flight the next day. And we had the beach house another day, so I was like, let's just go back and rest another day and then go the following day. So that's what we did. And I remember we got on the flight, everything was good, and then we landed in like, we had a layover in Germany. So we got into Germany and boom, I got hit by all those symptoms again. I was like, oh my gosh, is this ever going to end? And I remember having to like lay down and I laid on a bunch of chairs and then Ashley was kind of like stroking my head just to, to make sure that, you know, I was feeling okay. We got on the flight, we made it into Greece. And then once we got into Greece, we had to hop a ferry <laughs> in at, from Athens to it was a long travel. to the first island we were going to. So yeah, it was a super super long travel day, and we got there. Everything was good. The next morning, you know, I was feeling kind of off. I had the vertigo again. At this point, we had learned about these crystals in your ears. So Ashley was like, had me on the bed going. <laughs> You know, hitting my head, thinking these crystals were going to pop out or something. The vertigo. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we were, yeah, we were trying <laughs> so we were tr things. We took it easy, though. I mean, we had gotten in so late. I think we just slept probably most of the day. And then once you felt okay, I think we went out and explored a little bit. Yeah. And but, yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, we were okay, like... The, I guess that first island, we were we were okay. Some of the symptoms popped up, and then we'd just go rest, and then we'd get back out there, and, you know, this is kind of how it went on that first area. But then we ended up traveling to Mykonos, which is another island, so we hopped a ferry, went over there, and once we got into Mykonos, that's when, man, I just got hit hard with everything, and it just would not go away got so bad that we ended up back in the ER. This was like the fifth time we were in the ER over the course of of everything going on. And um, this time the doctor kind of had to calm me down because I was in this panic. I thought I was going to die. And you know, I remember he took ended up taking like a CT scan of my brain, took chest x-rays, you know, really tried to just ease all my concerns so I could go back and enjoy my trip. And he prescribed me some Xanax. So this was the first time I actually <laughs> got like a pharmaceutical prescribed to me that would calm me down from what I was experiencing. And the Xanax, it really calmed me down. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it probably wasn't the best thing for me no. looking back at it. But no. it allowed me to kind of get through the rest of the trip. When well, I say trip, I mean we, after there we cut our trip and we went home. Yeah, so we had like one more night and just enjoyed ourselves, went out to dinner, um, but then rebooked our trip to head back home and yeah, not go to Italy or France. Yeah. So we ended up going home and once we got home, first place we went, back to the ER. <laughs> so we ended up in San Francisco at SF General Hospital and went in with all of the stuff that had been done over the course of all these ER visits. They looked over everything, ran some blood work. You're fine, nothing's wrong with you. You know, go meet with your primary care doctor and she'll get you in with some specialists so they can run some more tests, right? So left there, went to uh, our primary care doctor. We had 
Kaiser, so it was through Kaiser. So went in, met my primary care doctor. She ran all these tests on me, nothing. Couldn't find anything wrong with me. And then she sent me to a neurologist mm -hmm. and they took all of these scans in my brain and x-rays and CT scans and they couldn't find anything wrong with me. Yeah, and it's like this game of like, you hope they find something, but then you're relieved that they don't find something because you don't want to find something scary, but then you get disappointed because there's still no answers, right? So yeah. it's just like this continuous game of searching for like, what the heck is up? Because he was just like on the couch, you know, could barely walk because he was off balanced you know, massive headaches, heart palpitation, just like so many things going on. And it just, it's frustrating not being able to find answers to that. Yeah, and so then I end up going back in to the primary care doctor. This is like mid-October at this point. So we got married beginning of September, got back from our honey to honeymoon, uh, mid-September and then mid-October I finally got another meeting with my primary care doctor where she reviewed all the tests that were done from the neurologist and all the blood work that was taken and and couldn't find anything and so what she did was put me down in, in the category of anxiety that maybe I have anxiety and that is what is causing this but didn't really tell me what causes anxiety, just told me I had this thing called anxiety and I needed to go and meet with a psychiatrist and she prescribed me some lorazepam, which is uh, an opioid, which is antidepressant. So started taking that and, and that certainly helped calm me just like the Xanax did, but didn't really give me an answer for what was going on. So. Ended up going to the psychiatrist, meeting with the psychiatrist, going down that road. The psychiatrist put me in anxiety classes. I took anxiety classes for over a month. And then I had a friend that in a Facebook group was talking about uh, parasites. And so this kind of made sense to me because I was in Mexico and hey, maybe I ate something or I drank some water and maybe I picked up something that uh, is causing these problems. I had a lot of stomach problems going on. So I was thinking, okay, that, that was it. That must be it. So I ended up going down the parasite road where we thought, okay, well, maybe we it's- thought, Oh, we have the answer. Yes, that was <laughs> it. We were so excited, I remember. and. We were like going to a wedding, right? Yeah, we were driving down to a wedding. I was driving, you were on your phone, and then that's when you read about this parasite thing and you're like, this makes so much sense. This is, <laughs> this is, I think this is what's wrong with me. Yeah, and so we ended up going down that road and I went out and started making my own herbal pills. These were like parasite de detox pills. It had a bunch of different herbs in it and I started taking them. And I would take like two in the morning, two at night type thing. And man, all sorts of stuff was coming out of me. <laughs> and it got pretty nasty where I was like looking at my poop and like trying to figure out what certain things were and what did I eat the day before? And what did I eat earlier? You know, could that be in my poop? Is this a parasite? You know, and like even thought there was like parasite eggs in my poop and stuff. and. I'm sure the herbs helped me, but it didn't really give me the answer I was looking for. Yeah, I just- It might have hurt you too. Yeah, because I was on all those antibiotics and then I threw all these herbs that, you know, weren't necessarily good herbs for the body, but herbs to detox the body. So I was probably detoxing all the good stuff out, not leaving room for, for any of the good. And so I ended up bringing these these poop samples into the doctor. I brought some into the psychiatrist even. And then the psychiatrist was like, go back to your primary doctor and you bring this to her. And so 
I ended up bringing it to her and then she got me in with the infectious disease doctor who then was examining all of my different poop samples. And this went on from November, okay, we're now in November, and this went on all the way till April. So from November to April, I'm sitting there pooping and then putting, collecting my poop and then bringing it into the infectious disease lab so they can try to figure out what, what exactly is going on. So at this point, we decided, okay, well, maybe it has something to do with what we're putting in our bodies. Yeah, we had heard from a neighbor that they were doing this Whole30 diet and that it's really helped their health and just how they feel and everything. So we looked into it, and Ben's mom looked into it as well, and then we decided to try it right which was great because it got us off of processed foods it eliminated dairy eliminated gluten um, which we now know that those are things that feed pathogens um, but it still kept in meat and it still kept in eggs um, and yeah still was a lot of fat in there yeah and so then i went back to the naturopath right and we talked about everything that had going on. She ordered some more stool samples just to see if, if maybe the place she gets her stool samples from is different than the conventional medicine. And, and so she gave me more probiotics, put me on some B12 shots, apple cider vinegar, and told me that I needed to eat more protein. Because at this point, I was really, really thin. I went from 100 in... 65 pounds down to 130 pounds in a matter of nine months because now we're you know getting into the summer months here and i still was sick still having these crazy panic attacks and at this point the conventional medicine put me on a different antidepressant put me on uh, clonopin and and that was i guess a stronger medicine and uh that that helped me with my panic attacks, but I was taking it a couple times during during the day. So then the naturopath came back to us and said, all right, we got your stool samples back and you've got this, this uh, thing called uh, Blastocystis hominis, which is, I guess, a bacteria and- But a parasite, right? Or a bacteria? <sighs> I, at this point, I don't okay. remember. I think it was a parasite. I called it a parasite, and I thought that was what was causing all my problems. So the course of action for this is, of course, antibiotics. So the naturopath prescribed me three days of antibiotics. After those three days were up, I had gone back in to see the conventional doctor. The conventional doctor then prescribed me seven more days. So at this point, I had taken nine days of this Alina, which is an antibiotic. I wasn't getting better. At this point, I just started going downhill fast. I, I, I mean, I was really, really sick at this point. Yeah. I couldn't even get off the couch. <laughs> I mean, that went on for another six months where I was like... Yeah, you I, maybe have these times of like where you felt okay, but most of the time you just didn't have any energy, didn't feel good, and that wore down on you, right? And you became very depressed. Yeah, so I had the depression, I had really bad panic attacks, anxiety, vertigo, all my symptoms were still there. And now on top of this, I couldn't get any sleep because I was worrying all night. All that I could think about was what is causing the sickness? Why am I so sick? You know, why can't the doctors figure this out? I mean, you go to the doctor, they should know. They should know why I'm sick. And I just felt really disappointed and yeah. felt I kind know. of lost. Like I just, I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, and there was so many times that he would call me. I'd be at work and you'd just be in tears and just felt like he was dying and felt like he just had a heart attack because he had a high anxiety attack and just 
you know, would have to talk him down. And, um, you know, luckily his parents and his sister live really close, or one of his sisters lives really close to us. So, um, and because I'd be in the city working and um, couldn't necessarily rush home. And luckily they were, you know, nearby to be there for him when I couldn't be here physically. But yeah, yeah. it was, it was really scary. I remember there was nights that I was afraid to go to sleep and I'd sit there and try to keep myself up because I thought if I went to sleep, I wasn't going to wake up. And it was bad, you know, it was real rough. And the reason we're, we're talking about this with you, even though it makes us uncomfortable to revisit what we went through, I think other people out there are going through something similar to what I went through. And I think if you watch this mm -hmm. video and you hear my story, then it might help you not make all the same mistakes that I made. So 24-7, I'm on the couch. I get up, I go my, do my doctor's appointment. So this time I had a doctor's appointment with conventional doctors. They still couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. At this point, now they're telling me I have IBS, which is caused by all the antibiotics they were giving me, you know? And then uh, next appointment, they're telling me that I have an autoimmune condition. I have uh, chronic fatigue syndrome because now I'm fatigued all the time. I can't get off the couch. Well, you've got chronic fatigue <laughs> syndrome. Or, you know, maybe you have Crohn's disease because your stomach problems can somehow be related to what is going on with your fatigue and why you're tired all the time. So at this point, it, it almost seemed like they just wanted to get me out of their office because I was always in there asking for mm -hmm. answers and they didn't have them so they gave me a label and now that I had this this label I was supposed to just go away well that didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> after these labels just kept being thrown at me I said well let's go find another primary care doctor so I switched my insurance got out of Kaiser and got into uh, a different insurance plan. So I was able to go see a doctor that uh, was part of Stanford Health. And I went in there and I met with this new doctor. I found this doctor, he's a lot older. I figured he's got experience, he's seen a lot, he's dealt with a lot. You know, he might have an answer for me. And he ran all the blood work, all the same tests, found nothing. The only thing that was elevated were my liver enzyme levels. So I take that test into the natural path. I'm still seeing her. And she kind of says, okay, let's get you on some liver stuff because you have elevated liver levels. We're going to give you some more B12 shots and put you on a higher dose of probiotics. So we're now like almost a year and a half in. And I've seen a lot of different specialists, a lot of different doctors, and I'm still like, withering away. I feel like I'm dying and, and no one's got these answers for me. All they want to give me is pharmaceuticals to cure the problem, but it's not fixing the root of the cause. And I remember now I'm getting these headaches, these migraines that are so bad that I'd end up throwing up and I'd end up throwing up all day long. And then the headache wouldn't go away. And then that would wipe me out for a whole week where I couldn't do anything. Couldn't get off the couch. Couldn't, couldn't do anything. So finally I said, all right, well, let's, you know, let's go to try another doctor. Let's go to a new doctor. So now we're, we're, we're seeing another doctor, but this guy, he specializes in infectious disease. So I, you know, I thought I had the parasite. Let's get another opinion. Maybe I still do. Maybe there's something else he can decipher for us, right? So walk in there, he says, okay, what's going on? Runs a blood test, all that stuff, not, finds nothing, right? So I, at this point I'm saying, well, can you like test me for cancer or something? Maybe I have cancer. Maybe that's why I'm not getting better. That's why I'm still sick. So he tested me for that. He tested, I think my B12, he tested my vitamin D and he noticed that I had low vitamin D and no cancer, thank God. 
now we find medical media. I want to tell you how we find it. A year and a half later. <laughs> a year and a half later, all the doctor to doctor stuff, we find medical medium. And uh, it was our cousin, my cousin in San Diego, who was at the wedding, who saw everything that was going on with me. She had been praying for, for me. And finally, her prayers were answered, and she found the medical medium book. And once she found the medical medium book, she called us immediately and said to my mom, Barbara, you, you've got to check this book out. This, this is exactly what Ben is dealing with. All his symptoms, all his conditions, they're here in this book. Yep, and then your mom read, I think, the chapter that related to you and then gave it to me and she's like, you have to read this. It describes what Ben's going through and it might help him. And so I read it and I was like, uh, wow. This is exactly what he's going through, all of these symptoms. And it went through and explained why, you know, that he was dealing with Epstein-Barr virus, stage four, four out of four, and here's how you can heal it. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. And so what did we do first? We did celery juice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was just like when when we, you know, when I read this, it was just like, oh my gosh. Like it was just like a weight lifted off our shoulders. I mean, Ben wasn't as convinced because I was, you know, I read it and I was like, okay, no, this, this is it. We are diving right into this. We're going to do everything this book says. This makes so much sense. So first thing we started the celery juice. And then we completely switched our diets because this book just lays out why you need to. Mm -hmm. So we did the 28 day cleanse, started that immediately. And that's raw fruits and veggies for 28 days. And which is just so amazing for your body. And doing that with the celery juice, I mean, Ben wasn't like 100% better, but he could actually like get off the couch. Yeah, yeah. Like he was like feeling a, like a little bit of relief, which was like, oh, like what a big step that was. Yeah, because we weren't making, I, I was going downhill. The minute we did the celery juice, the 28 day cleanse and the heavy metal detox smoothie, those were from his first book. Remember, he didn't have all the stuff he has out there today when I was first sick. Yeah, there was that book and his second book out. And, and the podcast. Yeah, his podcast and some blogs. But yeah, there wasn't all the other books information out. Yeah, so we, we started with that. We started incorporating some of the teas that he had listed in that book. And, you know... And it, the supplements. Supplements. That help Epstein Barr. Yep. And so it was pretty amazing to see how, you know, going down the conventional doctor road, I got nowhere, I got sicker, and all they wanted to do was push pharmaceuticals on me, and I remember even doctors printing out science and research articles and showing me these science and research articles that, like, they were going to somehow give me hope that eventually science or research would come around and find a cure for these autoimmune conditions that I'm dealing with. Yeah, and Epstein-Barr is does cause a lot of autoimmune diseases. So if this had gone on for much longer, I'm sure Ben would have eventually, you know, gotten a permanent label for one of those. And Epstein-Barr can also cause cancer in different you know different organs and things like that so it's like eventually he might have led to some crazy diagnosis yeah yeah so we're just so blessed that we found medical medium his information we're so thankful uh that we 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 jumped right on it and we did what anthony had said because we wouldn't have been here today i feel like i would have wilted it wilted away to the point where i just I would have just kept going downhill. This, this, the change in my diet, the change in my health snapped me out of it and got me back to, 
to a manageable level and I still went to the doctor. I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you what I did next. So I wasn't 100% convinced even after all of this because 6 months later I was still sick. I was still dealing with my symptoms. I was still dealing with my conditions, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I decided I got to go back to the doctor. I was convinced that this would fix him, but he was not convinced 100% because even though he was feeling better, he wasn't at that one, like back to feeling himself again. Yeah, I was still dealing with symptoms and conditions, you know, and this was six months in and I felt like, come on, I should be, you know, I should be feeling all better by now. And that wasn't happening. So I had doubt. I had doubt that this wasn't going to work for me. And so I went back to conventional medicine. And this time I got in with UCSF. Best hospital are in the Bay Area is UCSF. And I met with the doctor there and I went through all the, the findings from all the other doctors, all the scans, everything. And he ran blood work, didn't find anything. The same answer as all those other doctors that nothing was wrong with me. And if I have an autoimmune condition like IBS or Crohn's disease or chronic fatigue syndrome, what that means is my body is attacking myself. Your body is attacking yourself and that's what's causing these problems. Well, I also explained I had Epstein-Barr virus. And he said, well, Epstein-Barr virus is just mono. It's going to go, it'll go away and you won't even be dealing with it. This is just a temporary thing. Well, luckily I had read Anthony's book and understood what I was going up against when I went into this doctor for the first time after this new education, this new information. Yeah. So in Anthony's book, he says the doctors are going to tell you that your body is attacking itself. Boom. That's what they told me. Mm -hmm. The Epstein-Barr virus, they're going to tell you that it's harmless. That's what he told me. You know, and it was amazing to me to, to, to see it from a new perspective now. Now that I had this information, I went in with it, and he told me just what Anthony was going to tell me. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, I gained this new trust for medical medium and his information. And from that point on, I stopped fighting the medical medium information and just realized that healing is going to take some time and I'm not just going to get better overnight and this whole idea that you can go to the doctor and a pill is going to fix everything or a shot is going to fix everything that's not that's not the case you know healing takes time and yeah. work and and you got to you got to work through this stuff and I know I remember you saying that you were just waiting for that day to just wake up and just feel better. Mm -hmm. That never happened though, right? It was a very gradual process. Yep. yep. And we talk about this because I know a lot of you out there um, write us all the time and, and the most common question is, is when am I going to feel like my old self? Well, it's a gradual thing, you know. I, I wish I could tell you that you, you're, you know, doing this is going to fix you overnight, but it's it's a process. You know, you're cleansing, cleansing a little every single day. You're pulling more, little bit of some metals out of your body every single day. You're killing off the virus every single day, and over time, you're going to get your life back. Yeah. But right now you have to you have to start somewhere right start with the celery start with incorporating more fruits and veggies you know start with the heavy metal detox start removing these metals and over time you will get your life back yeah we all have a different cocktail mix of viruses bacteria pathogens metals radiation, pesticides, toxins in our bodies and those different cocktail mixtures 
create different symptoms and different level of the symptoms and you know also determines your timeline and how long things will take so it's important to understand that conventional medicine it, they push research and science and research and science is funded by the pharmaceutical industry the pharmaceutical industry is also in all of our universities they're the ones that are putting the curriculum out there for future doctors to learn off of. The pharmaceutical industry also funds the government, and then the government turns around and funds the pharmaceutical industry. Don't get us wrong, we're, we're not bagging on conventional medicine here, we're just saying that they're good for certain things, and other things they're not. Broken bones, surgeries, they're good for stuff like that. Stuff they can't see in your body, you don't want to go to them for it, like viruses, right? Not one doctor told me, like, change your diet. What are you eating? What are you putting in your body? Mm -hmm. You know, because that could affect how you're feeling. No one told me this. Why? Because they don't make medicine off telling people to eat fruits and vegetables to heal their body. There's no money to be made in that. They make their money off the pharmaceutical industry. Right. And food, the right kind of food, is medicine. Yep. So we hope you enjoyed this video. We enjoyed having to go back. That, well, not really. We, didn't, we don't like having to go back to the, no. the negative stuff. But the negativity will hopefully help some of you out there in your healing journey. And it's important to understand what happens with conventional medicine and how people get lost in that system. Yeah. But the next video we're going to talk about is going to be all about the medical medium side of things, right? So mm -hmm. this video was meant to kind of walk you through our journey through conventional medicine. The next video we'll talk about our journey with medical medium, the protocols, what we did to heal, a timeline on my healing journey. I know this is going to help you guys out there. I know once you kind of see how long it took me to heal, I think it will help put things into perspective for your own healing. Yeah, I think that's the biggest question we get for people that relate to Ben's story is how long did it take, you know, and what did you do? You know, people want to know. And so we're, we're excited to, to do that video for you guys so you can, can hear the story and the timeline about everything. Cool. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. We will see you guys next time. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you later. See ya. Bye.